Hi, hello, hi. Today I want to talk to you all about being an ambulatory wheelchair user and having an invisible disability. As many of you may likely already know, I have a condition called EDS. EDS is short for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It is a connective tissue disorder and it affects my entire body. It affects all of my joints, all of my organs, and there are a whole lot of symptoms. I'm not going to go through all of the symptoms in this video because that is not the point of this video and quite frankly it would take the entire time. <laughs> but for the sake of the topic, I'm going to focus mainly on one of my symptoms which is frequent dislocations and subluxations. So I assume everyone knows what a dislocated joint is. It's a joint that's not connected where it's supposed to be. It's out of its socket. A subluxed joint is a partially dislocated joint, so it's not entirely 100% out of its socket, but it is not in its assigned seat. So I have more subluxations in a day than I could count. It Like there's not, there's absolutely no way for me to keep track just in the time I've been filming this video and flailing my arms. I've subluxed my fingers and my wrist several times. My shoulder is also very badly subluxed today and it is incredibly painful but again it's just I can't I this is this is it this every day all day. So subluxations could be quick they could be repetitive. So a joint could pop in and out of its socket, a joint could pop in and out of its socket over and over again, or they could be a joint getting stuck in a position outside of its socket, or a joint just never actually fully being in the spot it's supposed to be in. I have quite a few permanent subluxations. Uh, the older I get, the more of them I have. The first one that I can remember are my ankles. My ankles have actually always been subluxed for as long as I can remember. I'm pretty sure for as long as I've been walking. <laughs> my right knee is permanently subluxed. It's not like that the top half of the leg is not attached to the bottom half. They move independently from one another. My wrists and fingertips are also not actually in their place. They're just always in a state of not being where they're supposed to be. So that means that certain movements, like I could move my wrist like this, even though it's subluxing. But if I do that and I'm putting any pressure, let's say like I'm trying to tighten my light and I turn the little knob, it's going to pop the joint out of its socket. It's gonna go from sublux to completely gone very quickly. Now the thing about my joints being out of place is that many of them can't actually be put back into place. So in order to get a joint back into its, you know, assigned seat, there's a certain amount of pushback that's required. It's complicated to explain, I'm not a doctor, but basically what I've been told from my doctors is there's not enough resistance to place the joints where they're supposed to be without doing more damage to my joints to begin with. Like all that and then they're just gonna fly out of their place again. It's just, it's not, it's not worth it. It's complicated. Anyway, so all that to just kind of scrape the iceberg of one of my symptoms, which is, you know, the dislocated and sublux joints. Now, I'm sure I sound like that guy from SpongeBob right about now, and you're wondering like, hey, you know, Aaron, weird flex, uh, but why, why, why are you telling us this? And what does that have to do with anything? Well, because of this, I've had to use mobility aids for my whole life on and off again. Crutches, canes, and I used to rent wheelchairs because they're quite expensive. But while I was growing up, I would only use the mobility aids when I would have injuries, which was often to be fair, but, I thought that I only needed them when I was injured. And now, as I've gotten older, I've realized I've come to a place where I need to use them oftentimes as a preventative measure. It's not about when I get injured. My injuries are constant. I can't remember a time where they weren't constant, to be honest. I just kind of thought everyone was always in this much pain. And when you're younger, your body is a little more resilient so you're able to endure a little more but even then anyway it's it's always been an issue but it's just as i've gotten older it's gotten worse wear and tear but yeah i have encountered some obstacles with certain mobility aids so let's start with canes canes don't really work for me they i'm very puzzled by them <laughs> when i use a cane i'm almost guaranteeing a shoulder subluxation or dislocation depends on how bad it is that day and how tired my muscles are of supporting the rest of me but i use a cane and immediately all that weight that i put on my arm just pops my shoulder right out and it's not a good time. It also puts extra stress on my elbow, my wrist, my hands. And on top of that, I've realized like, let's say if I've completely dislocated one of my knees and I cannot put weight on it, my cane doesn't help. Like I've, I've been in my own house and my knee just like, I land on it in a really bad position and I can't walk. My cane does not help me. I absolutely like if I'm not going to use a wheelchair in that scenario because I don't have the space or whatever it may be, I'll use crutches. The, the crutches will at least get the weight off my leg, but the cane? I don't, it, I don't know, maybe it's just me. <laughs> maybe it's just my body, but the only purpose it's ever served for me is just stability. It helps to stabilize me. If I misstep or hurt myself, it will stop me from falling over. 
I'll have something to lean on, but it's more like I'm leaning on that and then I'm sitting on the ground. It's not like it doesn't super help me. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Anyway, my issue with crutches is similar to the issue that I have with my cane being that crutches put a lot of stress on my upper body, so I have the issue with my shoulders coming out of their socket. I have the issue with my hands and wrists, all that stuff. So again, they help my legs a little more if I have a really bad injury on one specific leg, but then they hurt the other leg more because they're putting way too much pressure on that other leg and my hip goes into my pelvis and it's just a lot of issues. And they're also putting a lot more stress on my shoulders. And again, we're just basically guaranteeing shoulder dislocations. So that leaves me with walkers and wheelchairs. I'm not a fan of using a walker, just posture wise they hurt my back and if I'm using a walker 90% of the time I'm going to be just sitting on the cushion on the walker, like there's a seat almost on, on the walkers that I'm referring to, and at that point I might as well be using a wheelchair. So the most viable mobility aid for me so far has been using a wheelchair. It has been a journey to get to a point where I have accepted that I need a wheelchair not only under extreme circumstances but in most scenarios that involve standing or walking for more than a minute. I have a hard time explaining to people why that is because the thing is people see me stand or walk with what they assume is relative ease but they don't realize like for example to put it into perspective let's say you're lifting weights. When you lift weights at first the first like you pull those weights in and assuming it's a weight that you can handle it's not a problem and you could do it again and again and again and again until eventually you reach something called consecutive failure. It's when your muscles have done the same thing over and over again, like your muscles are able to exert themselves a certain amount but every time they lose more and more energy and they deplete the resources until eventually you will reach a point where you can't lift it back up again, you need to put the weights down. There are only so many times you could do that until eventually your muscles are exhausted. That's what my body is doing when I stand and walk. My ligaments aren't holding my joints together. Okay, so let's focus on the legs, let's focus on like the knees and ankles. So for example, with my knee, again, the top half of my leg is moving independently from the bottom half of my leg. The ligaments are not contributing to any stability. So what's happening is that my muscles are contracting. They're, they're flexing very, very hard to hold my leg in place. And that'll help for a little while, but it's not without extreme effort and it is not without pain, but it happens. I stand and I walk cool. But just like you lifting those weights over and over again until eventually you can't lift one another time, my leg is going through that every minute that I'm standing, every time I'm taking a step, I'm lifting those weights. And eventually, not that long after, I reach that point of exhaustion, that point where you drop the weights, my leg stops holding itself in place. My muscles relax. They cannot possibly continue to contract with that much intensity for another second. And then that's it. Any little bit of stability I did have in my already unstable joints is gone. And every time I take a step, my knee is landing wherever it wants. My ankles are just completely caved in toward the floor. I could, I could show you my ankles. That might help. And it's just, it's not safe and it's painful. And it makes it that I can't go to a lot of places. I can't go to Ikea or Costco. I can't go to like museums. I can't go to a lot of places unless I'm having a really good pain day and I didn't sublux too many things too badly in my sleep. And even at that, the place I'm going to has to immediately have a seat for me there. I could walk from my car to a doctor's office if I'm parked really close to the door and then sit in the doctor's office. I don't require my wheelchair for that on, on some days, but there are some days where I will require my wheelchair because all the steps I've taken inside of my house have already already exhausted my muscles and now I'm already in that state of consecutive failure. I'm already in that exhausted state and my muscles are already like, look, we can't keep doing this. So there are a lot of days where I won't be able to make that trip unless I have my wheelchair. Just kind of in a nutshell, and that, that's only with looking at one single possible injury that my body could sustain from walking or standing longer than it can. That kind of explains, hopefully, to you why I need to use my chair. And I'm sure it makes a lot of sense to a lot of you who may not have understood it before. But the thing is, I don't have 15 minutes to explain that to every single person I encounter out in the world every time I stand from my chair or walk from my chair. And I shouldn't have to explain that to every single person in the world. But people see someone stand or walk from their wheelchair and a lot of folk will immediately assume that you're just, you're faking. You're faking your disability. You don't need that chair. Look, you can walk. Ah. <laughs>
Again, most people won't know what it is that my body is going through, the state that my body is in, the extreme amounts of effort that are not sustainable long term, more than like a minute, that my body needs to go through just to take a couple of steps. And the thing is, what seems invisible to others, it's not actually that invisible. Growing up, I was often made fun of for my walk. I was assigned female at birth. Surprise, I'm trans. Um, and I was made fun of a lot for the weight of my gait. When I would walk, I was very heavy-footed. And funny enough, the way that it was described to me was, you always walk like you're carrying really heavy luggage. And I was always kind of like, what does that even, what does that even mean? I don't get it. But now, looking back at it, like if you really stop to think about it, it actually makes a lot of sense. Carrying heavy luggage is strenuous. The reason why you walk the way that you do when you're carrying something heavy is because your body is under a lot of strain. That's what my body goes through every single time I'm walking or standing. I'm under a ton of strain. So now when I look back at it, it's actually kind of validating and funny to think about. I'm like, huh, weird how that happens. But it also kind of made me realize that it's not exactly that my disability is invisible. It's just that it's not super obvious and people's idea of who they think needs a wheelchair or what a wheelchair is used for is kind of not right. Firstly, not everyone who uses a wheelchair is paralyzed. So I don't understand why people are shocked when I stand or when I move or when I cross my leg when I'm in my chair. They're like, oh. <gasps> How? And I'm like, if there are so many reasons why one person might need a wheelchair, <laughs> including just like, I broke a leg, like I don't, anyway. A lot of folks seem to have this obsession with catching people, faking their disability, and I just I have a lot of thoughts about that. Firstly, there's literally nothing to gain from faking a disability, like using a chair. I don't know if you've ever actually been in that situation, but most people, when they see me using a wheelchair, I will not get more attention. It's the absolute opposite. Most people will either pretend they don't see me, pretend I'm not there, like just completely ignore me, cut in front of me so that they don't have to wait for me to get through a door. To be honest, most people don't care enough to be sympathetic. It's not like, oh, that person's in the chair. It's more like, ugh, this person in the chair is taking so long. Like no one actually cares enough about you to give you extra attention. They're just annoyed that you're an inconvenience to their day almost all the time. So like there's literally nothing to gain. I don't, I don't know where this idea came from. Like I'm not getting anything. And even academically, I did not get to have my degree from college because I failed my gym class seven times because regardless of the class I took, I would get hurt. There was no class that I could take that I could get through and so they didn't let me get my diploma even though I finished my program. It was just the gym class. Like I'm, I'm not at an advantage by being disabled. So like if we could just drop that whole thing, that would be just great. But also just, I just, <laughs> Like I said, once it's explained to you, I'm sure it makes a lot more sense. I'm sure you understand like, oh, I get it now. You could stand for short amounts of time the same way that I could lift 50 pounds maybe once or twice, but can't do it repeatedly. Got it, I get it. That's what your body's going through when you walk. Makes sense, awesome. I'm glad I could explain it to you, but it's just, again, the underlying issue is that I shouldn't have to explain it. Nobody should have to explain it. Why are we rolling our eyes or scoffing at folk? Like, it's just, I just want to encourage people to stop and think about it the next time that they're being judgmental. Not not just if you see someone standing up from their chair, but if you see someone taking the elevator instead of the stairs. Again, if I walk from my car to my doctor's office and it would be more strenuous on my body to get my chair out of my car to try to wrestle with the door to fit through a door that barely fits my chair, I might choose to walk into my doctor's office if my body allows it that day. But I'm not gonna take the stairs, I'm gonna take the elevator. And to you maybe, walking by me at the same time, you might think, I don't need the elevator, but I don't have this 15 minutes to dedicate to you to explain to you my disability. So again, the next time you see someone taking an elevator, even using a straw, you see someone just doing something that you personally don't think is necessary because you don't think they need to. Remember this. I would really love if you could remember this because pain, unless it is expressed, oftentimes times is not visible. You can't see my ligaments through my body. And although it is quite obvious, if I show you, most people aren't looking for that. Most people aren't like, mm, I don't know, that knee, that knee. <laughs> It's not super obvious unless you're really looking for it. Like, it's just, look, I would just love if we could each trust each other to make the right decisions for our own health and our own lives. When someone else decides to take the elevator or the escalator or uses a wheelchair on one day, uses crutches on another day, uses none the day after, it's just trust that person to make the right decision about their own health. And maybe remember that like, you can't, you can't always see everything that's going on. I am not more disabled when I'm in my wheelchair. People see my chair and sometimes it's like, then they understand why I need an elevator. Then they understand
understand why I might need a straw with a heavy drink because I can't lift it. I'm going to dislocate my wrist. People understand when there's an indicator, but I think it would be a good practice to remember that there isn't always a visual indicator for you. And that doesn't mean that that person's not disabled. I'm not less disabled on the days where I'm not using my chair. It's a contrary. On the days where I'm not using my chair, I likely require more accommodations because my body is under extreme amounts of physical stress. Anyway, just food for thought. Just wanted to explain it to folks because I do get a lot of questions about like, why are you in a wheelchair? What happened? And I'm like, it literally, I just, I, most pictures I take are inside my house, so I'm already in a chair. And occasionally I'll take a picture of myself standing. A lot of bathrooms can't even fit my wheelchair through the door. It also took me a long time to come to terms with the fact that I needed a chair. So, I mean, it's not exactly like every time I'd get a rental chair, I would take a selfie with it. So there's a lot of stigma surrounding using a chair. I had height dysphoria. It, just, it was a whole thing. It took me a long time to get to where I am with my self-acceptance. I just wanted to make this video to explain it maybe because I don't, I don't talk that much about my EDS on on YouTube. I talk a lot more about it on like Twitter. Um, but yeah, just a little explanation and a little encouragement to again, just don't, don't, don't be mean. Don't just stop, please. Uh, that's it. If you enjoyed this or if you have questions, I'll probably make another video about EDS. I can make more videos about what it's like to be an ambulatory wheelchair user. It's a lot. So yeah, we can talk about all that. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Let me know. Let me know if you're interested in that and I'll do it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day and a great week and you take care of yourselves. All right, thanks. Bye.